Hey everyone, I'm Phil and this is Everything Spicy. So how are we doing today? Uh, it is Friday afternoon. This is probably about eight hours earlier than I normally live stream, right? But I was sitting around the house today, you know, things to do around the house, things I did want to do, things I didn't want to do. One other thing I thought about, you know, um, growing your channel. You know, we talk about a lot of different things, um, you know, funny things, entertaining thing. What's up, Jelly Duck 100? How you doing, brother? Good to see you in here. Yeah, we talk about a lot of different things on channels, right? Um, ultimately, I think all, all of us in here want want to achieve the same thing. What's up? What's up, Oreo Mouse 8888? How you doing, man? Good to see you in here. Muglot, what's up, brother? How you doing? You, aren't you at work there, Muggy? Muglot? Fish in the Mitten TV. What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. You know what? I see a lot of people that I don't always get to see at nighttime when I come on live during the daytime. <laughs> oh, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. So, yeah, you know, part of my thing is I was work at 3 till 7. Oh, so you're not even at work yet. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I'm female. Okay. Did I say, I'm sorry, did I say something weird? Did I say something weird? Oh. All right. We're female. All right. Got it. Uh, so, so yeah. So, my thought today was, what's up, Amy McFarland? How you doing? First time here. Good to see you. Um, as we're all, uh, we're all trying to kind of do the same thing eventually, right? You know, we're all small YouTubers, right? Whether you're a channel that's got a couple hundred thousand or a few thousand subscribers, you know, we're all considered to be small YouTubers, right? There's these great big, huge channels out there. What's up, Ross Rooms? How you doing? That obviously have figured it out, right? They figure out exactly how to do things and figure them out. They figure exactly out how to, how to do live streams, right? How to do, maybe they're not so good at live streams, but they have figured out how to do the videos, how to put a video out there, that how to edit the video, how to do the video, how to make good content, and how to keep people engaged in their videos. One of the things that we need to work on, though, is building that community, right? You don't just put a video out there. I've seen some videos out there. You don't just put a video out there and people start watching it, right? What's up, Sam Outdoors? How you doing, man? Silver Fox? Um, there's some things you gotta you gotta do, and one of them is building your community. So, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was what we I won't say what I have done, but what people are doing in the community. What's up, Christina Trammell? And that is building your YouTube community, right? What's up, Gemma's Journey Grace? How you doing? In case I didn't say it, what's up, Eagle VP? It's going out, uh, being on. You know, when you have your um, free time, your YouTube time. You know, sometimes we go and watch other people's videos. We can learn by watching other people's videos, right? We can learn about what they do, how they pan in and pan out, things like that. But it's also about uh, checking these people out live, right? We can comment on people's videos. Commenting on people's videos is great. Matter of fact, if you have someone in this business that you idolize that still isn't too big to not look at comments and whatnot, you know, a good thing would be is to make sure you watch all their videos and put comments that are relative to the um, information they're putting out there for you. You know, um, so if you're watching someone that um, you know about does stuff about YouTube, um, listen to what they think. Go listen from beginning to end. Gather information in your head. That way, you can learn something. But two, you can put a comment in there for this person. You know, they, someone sees that you're constantly coming to their channel. You're going to interest them. Wow, this person's coming to my channel all the time. You're going to interest, you're going to pique their interest. They're going to see when they go live, right? When someone goes live and they see this person in the chat pop up in the live, they're going to shout this person out. When you get recognized by these bigger channels, you know, it makes other people think, oh, what's going on with this person that I want to go and check out this person? I want to be a part of what this person is doing. Um, now, one of the things I've done, what's up, Foxy Lady at Outdoor? And um, I've grown my channel to where I'm at a, a little bit over, you know, 14-month period of time. So, again, no special growth, no, you know, 
no accelerated growth. No. One of the things I have done since I started live streaming was getting together with other YouTubers, right? Getting together with people that are in my genre of YouTube, which is my spicy community, and outside of my genre of YouTube. Uh, if you watch, if you've watched anything that I do at all, you'll notice that most people that are up on the panel with me don't do what I do. Occasionally, there's someone that come up on the panel, but they're interesting people, right? Um, this this benefits everyone. Thank you, Ross Rooms. This benefits everyone, right? When you are seen on a daily basis, a semi-daily basis, by other YouTubers as someone of interest, someone that's up on a panel and whatnot. That interests other people. People want to know what's going on with this person. Not only do they want to see what you're doing live, but they want to see what the other people are doing live. They want to see what kind of videos and what kind of content that you're making. What's up, New Founders, Ingalls family? How you doing? Hey, Sam, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, so these are things. These are ways that your channel can grow um, by simply just going and visiting, you know, um, a motivational speaker, Zig Ziglar. If you guys are familiar, anybody is familiar with Zig Ziglar? What's up, Elisa Kerwood? How you doing? Zig Ziglar talks about you get what you want if you help enough other people get what they want. And that's what you do. You know, you go out in this YouTube wild community that we have called YouTube and you help other people out. You go, go on to other people's live streams. You go on other people's live stream panels, you know. When you go to other people's live stream panels, be prepared to be interesting. Be prepared to have a, um, what's up, Dutch? How you doing? Be prepared to have some kind of topic that you might bring up, you know. Sometimes, I tell you what, sometimes when we are live, me and my group of people that we're up here with, um, sometimes, you know, we're at a loss for, for a few minutes as far as a topic or something that would entertain uh, people. What's your definition of niche or niche, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, for me, niche is like I'm a, I'm about a spicy channel, right? You know, most of my videos are going to be about spicy. When people come here, they see everything spicy. They want to see. Now, occasionally, I do do some other videos that are outside of that niche. But it's saying other things that have uh, started to interest me. What's up, Spooky Bed Hair? How are you? So, again, you need to find something that interests you because finding what you do here, it's got to interest you, right? You can't just go in here not knowing what you're going to do um, and just do something. What's up, Saucy Shane? How you doing, man? Good to see you in here. Um, so, yeah, you can't just go into YouTube blindly. You have to grab onto something. You know, this is what I'm going to do. And as you go along, you find yourself and you modify things, you know, um, as, a, as someone who does spicy stuff all the time. I also found out that, you know, occasionally I do grow stuff and different things like that. So you find your niche, you find your, what it is you do and you grow. And then again, you find other people that are trying to do the same thing, right? Um, and that is grow your channel. So again, I used to go to other people's panels. Um, and I, I, you know, I, what's up McCoy's, how you doing? It's <laughs> at my stupid job. Um, so yeah, you go to other people's panels, you go to other people's communities. You find you may find other things that you that interest you that you didn't know about. Um, so you know, I, I want to keep referring back to stuff that I do, but it's not necessarily what I do. It's what you can do. I mean, again, you see someone live out there, go and check out someone else's live. Someone that's got a decent no, decent number of people in their live, go and check and see what they're doing. Kind of see if they're if what they're doing is effective, if it's bringing a bunch of people in the room, or if it's not effective. If they're offering to allow people up on their panel, go up on someone's panel. But when you go up on someone's panel, you know, be interesting, be compelling. Uh, the worst thing you could go do is go up on someone's panel, not ha not be interesting, not be compelling, and you know, you know, hurt yourself. You don't you wouldn't hurt yourself. Longevity. People people remember what you did last week. People don't remember what you did last month, two months. Unless, unless you really screws the pooch, right? Uh, what's up, Kirk? How you doing, man? Um, Nuke Chiliheads, what's up, man? How you guys doing? So, other panels. I mean, I I can't, in, you know, once I once Streamyard came about, all right, when it was um, Google Hangouts or whatever Hangouts, I wasn't getting on it because I didn't have Hangouts on my computer. I couldn't have 
hangouts on my computer. My computer was too dumb and too slow. Um, but StreamYard allowed me to branch out beyond just what I was doing, just doing live streams by myself allowed me, and challenges allowed me to branch out beyond what I was doing. So it um, allowed me to find other channels, other um, genres of stuff that interest me or semi-interested me, and I became more interested in things. So, um, again, one of the things I say, too, if you go to some somewhere else, be prepared. You know, what is the topic? And, and it shouldn't necessarily be something you're complaining about, um, but it should be something you should try to do something that's positive, something that's going to make people lean in. Maybe it's something funny, you know. Maybe you've got a funny story. Maybe you got funny stories. Uh, Google Hangouts didn't shut down. Well, I didn't say it did shut down, uh, but a lot of people don't use Google Hangouts, and I never had it on my computer. So, um, but um, smaller channels, bigger channels, and smaller channels. So, if you're a smaller channel, what's a good thing for you to do? Hey, if you can get someone that has a bigger channel to put you up on their panel, so you get more exposure. Do that, you know, if you can get someone, again, someone bigger to collab with you, collab with them. Um, bigger channels, it's not beyond you to find someone up and coming to go to a smaller channel. Um, for if you're a, you know, like say uh, my channel, you know, 3,300 3, people, right? I should be looking at or trying to get with bigger channels. One, so we can collab and share ideas. I can help them. They can help me. But two, it does help your overall subscriber count, your views, because again, most of you guys are probably like me, right? And that is you believe that your content is good content. The biggest problem you've got with your content is that your content is not reaching enough people in the YouTube world, right? Right. Everybody, uh, everybody that's here, you know, wouldn't be continue to be doing what they doing. Uh, if what's up Viper gaming, what's up Max Air? How you doing? if you didn't think that content that you were making was good. So biggest problem you, we all have, right, is hitting the right algorithms and everything else for YouTube to share us out. But we got to share ourselves out. Um, if you go live, you know, if you're going to do something, make sure you're sharing it. And all, I, the big, all of your um, social media, the biggest thing I see is that someone's on a YouTuber and say, oh, no, I don't have that Facebook crap thing. Well, why not? Why not? That's another way. Uh, I had to do that. I had to do it outside of my regular Facebook and doing everything spicy Facebook. I did Instagram. I have a Twitter. Now, none of this stuff have I, you know, deep into a lot of this stuff. I'm actually doing um, real part time. But again, those other things are there in order to, you know, help build a community. And again, that's what you want to, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to build a community. And it's funny because as I'm talking about building a community to you folks. I'm seeing my friends pop up in my chat down here in the bottom, not my chat, but my uh, basement down here in the bottom. People that have completely different genres, completely different things than what I do are my friends. And this has happened for me over a period of time. And a lot of you guys, if you've watched this channel, you know who I'm talking about. You, If I, if I gave you, told you that there are four people, there are three people, there are three people in my basement right now, I bet you could guess which three people are in my basement. And the same holds true for any one of these people in my basement. If they were live and had people in their basement, I bet you could, you could pretty much guess who was in their basement. So you know what? We've built a community, right? Me and my friends, my friends that are in the basement, I'm not going to go in their names. You could bring, you could probably put their names in the chat. That would be, you'd be good guesses if you guys want to, uh, you know, put some guesses in the chat. Uh, I'm sure they would, they, they're all going to get to see them. Um, but um, yeah. And, and then, you know what, we share this out and we bring in other outside people. You know, I have brought in people into my panel, brought people into my panel. Some have been interesting. Some have been not interesting. Some have been not interesting, funny. You know, we have, you guys have watched the channel. These all these little intricacies that we do, all these things we do, uh, all these things are building a community. Um, now, one thing I do recommend. What's up, Melinda? How are you? Uh, one thing I do recommend is trying to stay away from drama, guys. There's a lot of drama on there out on YouTube, and you can be on drama here, 
on a panel. You can be on drama in the chat, or you can be in drama behind all of this, okay? Where there's all this all this crazy stuff going on behind the scenes. The best thing I can tell for most everybody is to, you know, control your urge to say something. Control your urge to do something. Best thing is not just oh, face Facebook is Facebook is crazy. You know, it wasn't until about four or five, six months ago, I realized how bad it is on YouTube. You know, YouTube with all the live streaming, I think has become a lot like Facebook and all the um, drama that's going on. Um, the best thing you can do is to stay away from drama because when you comment on someone else's drama or so, that suddenly becomes your problem. And it becomes your problem not because you want it to be, because someone else or someone else's else wants it to be your problem. Like, well, who are you to comment on something like this? You're not all that in a bag of cookies, right? You know, and that's and that's a big thing, guys, is the best thing you can do. I can tell you that the, mostly the only people that are blocked from my channel are people who are trolls, okay? I would say I got probably, I can count on one hand how many people I've got blocked on my hand there are people other than trolls and I don't even block some people that I want to block only because I don't want to create the drama that that it creates right when you block someone there's already got that you you already a drama queen or king or whatever going on boom that creates another problem and then they get up on their channel and like who the hell does he think he is blocking me on his channel right and then the same thing, and, and then and then that, that infects all these other people. That's, that's what this person wants to do. That's what this person wants to do. This person wants to um, infect the things. Well, let's do that's exactly it. Um, they want to infect other people because they don't want to feel alone. They don't want to be the only, I don't be the only one blocked on, you know, this person's channel. Why am I blocked? So they want everybody else to get upset with them. And they want they want to feel like like, you know, they're not the only one. And then, the, you know. So the best thing you, at least for me, this is again, this is this is what I do. What's up, Chewy? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, best thing you can do is to try to make sure you're getting along with everybody. Matter of fact, if you, I'm looking at my phone right now. If you'll notice, most of you guys in here, you're blue. Um, I just made someone else blue. I'm gonna make. Uh, if you've been coming in here a period of time, you're blue. And the reason I make most of my people that come in here blue. Is because I realize they have real channel channels. Real channel people, for the most part, aren't going to come in here, aren't going to create problems uh, in your channel because they don't want problems created on their channel, right? That's what you're going to do, you know. So, and again, good good to see you, Harry. How you doing, man? I'm gonna make sure. Okay, I got everything. All right, what's up, Sure Shannon? Show how you doing? So again, network with other channels. Through, you know, you can network through the whole, you know, click on your channel, click on my channel. I watch your video. You watch my video. Leave a genuine comment. That's great, guys. That's great. But when they say leave a genuine comment, it's also trying to create genuine connections. You know, you may not find that person you leave a genuine comment for the first time. You may not find that that's someone that you're really interested in until you come up on their panel or you go up on a panel that they're on. You might go up on a panel like mine and, you know, yeah, you, you got no interest in anything spicy, you know, but you come up here and suddenly, you know, you, you find someone like Crazy Ann to be funny or you're really interested and what Sam and Faith in the Fall and you're singing, you know, maybe you sing yourself or maybe you play an instrument or something and you find that really interesting. Or maybe you're like WH Outdoors or some of these other guys where you're any, really interested in bushcrafting or the outdoors like Sty North is. What's up, Mr. Fulton? How you doing? What's up, Larry Dees? How you doing? WH Outdoors, how are you doing? So, so you so you get in these places and you learn these things. Again, you want to network with bigger channels if you can. Uh, maybe slightly bigger, maybe, you know, go as big as you can go. But again, the bigger, much, much bigger channels probably aren't going to let you in. Okay. But if you're, but if you're a big channel, you should probably, or bigger channel, like I said, I don't mind bringing people up on my panel that have 200, 300, 400, 500. I mean, I, I, I can't, I'm, I, when I would got started in this, I didn't see channels with 3,300 people bringing me up. Right. 
They got their own thing going on. And I'll be honest with you, when I was 100, 200, 300 subscribers, you know, I didn't, ha not that I got it all together now. Listen to me. Hey, listen, you know, um, but didn't have it all together. So, but again, you, you get it over time. A lot of that is just by doing stuff. Oh, is Dojo in there? Someone say Dojo. Someone say Jojo. Dojo. 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 What's up, brother? How you doing? Good to see you in here. And of course, you you you, you make connections with people all over the place. Now, okay, you're shy. You're on YouTube, but when it comes to being live, you're shy, right? You don't want to be up on panel. I don't want to put makeup on. You know, I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to do that. Whatever it is that you don't want to have to do that keeps you from coming up on a panel, right? See this thing over here? That's your chat, right? Be active in the chat. Um, not just saying, hey, you, hey, you, hey, you. You want to make sure you shout everybody, talk to everybody that you know and people that you don't know when you're in the chat so that, you know, you're recognizing people and people that are recognizing you, you're doing it back. But you also want to have interesting and engaging conversation with people in the chat, right? Whether it's related to what's going it should be related to the topic that's going on on the screen in front of you, but it should also be related maybe to something else because sometimes there's an entirely different thing going on in the chat than what's going on on the panel, right? Can we all agree to that? Yeah, that happens all the time. So again, when you get involved in that and it's positive, it's not negative, all right? Um, you get people that are, find you interesting, go check out your channel, you go check out their channel. And again, you might... It, you might come in here, and at the end of the day, when you come to my channel, you might meet someone in my chat. You might, and you might, you may go, and they might have an all different bunch of places that they go, and you may never come back here. But you found someone, someone else, or a group of people that are more, are a lot like you, that you are, you can communicate well with, that find you interesting, that you find them interesting, and all these great things. And what's all this going to do? This is going to grow your channel. When you, now again. We all do a little bit of the, you know, you subscribe to mine, I subscribe to yours, genuine comment, genuine comment. Let's see if this works out. Let's, see, you know, let's see if is it you or is it me, right? Type little what, billion channel networking. We all know what networking is. Uh, it's not sub for sub, but we but we do try to build relationships, like shaking hands with a stranger. You know, see if you see if you find some common ground. But then as you get bigger, it's about building a solid foundation. You want to build a solid foundation. The best you can with your channel. So, um, stay away. Oh, two major things if you're going to do this. All right, guys. Um, unless you're, unless this is what your channels are about. What's up, Joe Cook? How you doing? Biggest coup. Cool. <laughs> uh, and that is there you go. And that is stay away from politics and stay really away from religion. You know. Um, if that's your if your channel is about politics or your channel is about religion, by all means, obviously go with it. You know, those are the people that you're going to get to come to your channel. So if you're a right wing guy or you know, or if you're a middle guy or you're a left wing guy, you're trying to draw those people to your channel. You can do all the drama about right wing, about left wing, left wing about right wing, and people in the center. Obviously, that is what's gonna generate, you know, views and things for you. But if your channel's not about that, or you don't want your channel to be about that. Best thing you do is stay away from politics and religion. And again, like I was saying before, I got notes over here. You know, I'm not just winging this. You know, um, the drama is staying away from the drama. It's a by by far the best. Um, being on here for 14 months, uh, there's a lot of channels out there that I've seen grow through drama, um, and that's fine. But I don't believe at the end of the day they're going to need to lose that. Um, in order to become something more than, you know, a, a, I believe anyways, this is my belief, than just a drama channel, something where people rant and rave and, you know, it's an ugly situation. So, um, oh, and, and be, again, be careful about, we talked about this earlier, be careful about the comments that you make about other YouTubers negatively, whether it be on a panel it be in a chat or even behind the scenes. You know, you don't want to, you know, heaven forbid, you know, you be talking to someone and you make a comment about one of their friends and you didn't think how close 
our friendship was, and you hurt yourself. So again, um, Zig Ziglar is one of those people I always talk about. You know, if you help enough other people get what they want, you get what you want, and you'll grow your channel. So um, what I'm going to do now is just ask: Is there anybody that's got any questions, anything specific for me um, that you'd like to ask about, whether it's about their channel? Um, I, you know, one thing I can tell you about your channel, and you can be, feel free to start typing questions if you have anything for me, is the best thing you can do for your channel is watch YouTube creators that are trying to help you. When I say YouTube creators, if you haven't already figured it out, there's channels out there that'll help you with thumbnails. There's channels out there that will help you with um, titles. You know, there's channels out there that'll tell you everything, you know. A lot of times we think it's sound, we think it's lighting, we think it's, uh, you know, there are channels out there that can help you with everything. I watch these videos all the time. Um, Ryan G. Johnson, or Brian G. Johnson, sorry. Uh, Nick Nimmin, um, just to name a couple. I mean, there's plenty of them. Uh, Daniel Batal, I like what he does helping with Filmora. Uh, bad titles, bad titles are, you know, are tough. You know, it, it's, you know, a lot of times um, it's what you think is a good title, isn't a good title. You know, there's a thing called TubeBuddy and recently added it to my computer. Um, and, I, and it helps me to make sure I don't put a stinker of a title in there because the worst thing you can do. What's up, Pitbull? How you doing? What's up, CSX Train? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Worst thing you do. What's up, OG-san? How you doing? Daniel Batal is awesome, right? See, there you go. Just just mentioning someone's name, you know, you strike a chord with someone that you have common. Now you have common ground in another way, shape, or form, right? Um, but yeah, um, definitely going and finding these YouTubers. And most of these guys are anywhere from four, five hundred thousand subscribers to over a million. These people are going to be people that are going to give you the information. That's going to help you to grow your channel. So you're going to go out there. You should go be going out there and doing what you're doing right now. And that's being in other people's live chats. You should be in other people's live panels when you feel comfortable in doing so. And you feel you can go on there and be interesting and actually contribute something to the channel. And by the way, when you come up on someone's panel, don't be walking around with your cellular phone and distracting everybody. Because when you got five, six people up on a panel, and everybody is in a sitting position, and you're up with your cell phone, and the camera's on everything but you, and you're going around the room, and people are hearing noise. It's very distracting for the other people that are out here. So, but again, make sure that you're interesting. So, um, so anybody got any questions for me? Any questions whatsoever? What's up, Brad? How you doing? If not, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up these poor people that have been waiting in the basement. Uh, for a while now. What's up, JCT? How are you going doing? Because I definitely want to answer any questions if anybody's got any questions. What's up, Rob's Homemade? Hello and welcome back to Rob's Homemade. What's up, Rob? How you doing, man? It was good to catch a live video. I got to get back, get back to work. Well, good to see you. Is that Matt? So Phil's creepy videos. What's up, man? How you doing? Yes, Phil. My name is Tim. What's up, man? How you doing? Kirk Whipper. Tim. Thank God it is Friday. <laughs> What's up, Larry D's? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring up my folks um, from the basement, and I am just going to click on them. Go click, click, click. There you go. Because you know what? These people are all equally important to me. What's up, guys? Hey. Hello. <laughs> so, I don't know. I thought I'd try something different today and come on here, and I don't know if uh, anybody learned anything or it strikes a chord with anybody. But, I, you know, a lot of what I was talking about, I believe in. Um, oh, Phil. All right, here's Phil. Have you tried the bomb hot sauce? Well, first of all, I'm Phil. Are you talking to uh, you talking to the uh, – maybe – see, there you go. I, I'm jumping in. She, you're actually talking – maybe you're talking to Tim McDonough? Tim He's asking yeah. Tim. He's asking Tim. So, yeah. well, you know, I've had people, you know, before call me Tim because, you know, I, I look so much like hot sauce junkie Tim, right? No. <laughs> uh, really? Really? <laughs> didn't, didn't get that, huh? No. Yeah. 
I need new uh, glasses. <laughs> so, no, I had it. Do you watch The Last Dab on YouTube? There's a good quote. Yeah, yeah actually, um, it's not The Last Dab. It's the, um, is it The Last Dab? No, it's uh, Hot Ones. A Last Dab. So is there, maybe there's another show called The, is there another show called The Last Dab? I think it's just The Hot Ones where they do the wings, where they do an interview uh, with celebrities of all shapes and sizes, all different genres and whatnot. Yes, I've watched that. It's awesome. It's nice to see like the, your your celebrities getting into stuff like that. So, how you doing, Levi? Good to see you. Yellow Duck has a question up there for you. Did you missed the question I was saying. All right, Miss Jelly Duck's question. Where if you can is? highlight the question with big letters, it's easier to see. I maybe put. How to deal with you know. You know what, Jelly Duck? How to deal with people who send you hate comments every day? Don't look at them. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. I mean, I have I have friends that will spend more time, will focus, give more attention to one bad comment than a thousand excellent comments, than two thousand, three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand excellent comments. They have people telling them how awesome they're doing. They're having the same community that they're in, people telling them how what a great job they're doing. And then someone who's just a hater, someone who's just irrelevant to their own channel, listen to one comment from one person or even a group of people. Trust me, those people, excuse me, those people get together and they and they try to get to you. And the worst, the worst thing you can do is reply to it. The worst thing you can do is come on here and let them know um, that you're seeing those comments. Ignore them. Ignore them. As, as hard as it is to ignore them. Ignore them, delete them. You know why a lot of you know this is not yours. You said mentioned email. A lot of these things come up in YouTube comments that aren't shared on the screen. They're stuff that you know YouTube holds for review. If YouTube's holding it for a review, there's probably a reason. Maybe not going. I mean, I can't tell you the last time I went into my spam or my comments that are held for review. Um, one because I just it's just not something I think about constantly. But it, it, it's if there's something that's negative or derogatory in there, that's not going to help me. Right. You know, uh, one thing, if I can, Phil, what I do is, you know, I look at it. There's a difference between a hate comment and just a kind of a bad opinion. If the, if they've got an opinion, and it's just it doesn't sit good, you know, it's like, well, your opinion, okay, I heard it. And I, I just let those go. But if it's hateful, if it's, I mean, trying to tear you up or tear down your channel, I just delete them. I don't even finish reading them. Once I get the tone of it, delete it. I don't want my audience to have to read it either. Well, you don't need this that negative in here, right? Oh, no, because it's like you said. There's so many nice comments, and then you got that one garbage one in the middle. No, throw it out. Just throw it. You, what do we do with garbage? We take it out. Yeah, take yeah. the garbage out. Yeah. And, and well, ignore it. Oji Sign, you should. I am not going to tell people what they should do on their videos. I'm going to tell you how you should network and how you should, you know, check out co other people that are bigger YouTubers that are giving you suggestions. I'm not going to tell you how you should do your. You should talk more. You should do more music. You should. Music should be higher. It should be lower. As a matter of fact, when I, when I see people comment, on people's finished products that man your music was too loud or your music should have been louder or whatnot you know that's for them to kind of figure out i mean who am i maybe they wanted their music louder maybe they you know my friends if i've got a problem with one of my videos and, and my friends will commonly tell me if there's something you know there's too much music or the music that's who i want to hear it from and that's who i'm going to take my constructive criticism from right so, so what do you do? What do you do in this case, Phil? I did last summer. I did one kayaking, and I talked for about two minutes in the front of it, and the rest of the video was just background music, me paddling around the lake, and then at the end, I talked for another minute or two, and that was it. So I got two different kinds of comments in the, on the same video. You didn't talk mm. enough. 
you didn't talk enough. I wanted to hear what you were looking at and seeing and how it felt and on and on. And then I got a comment that said, too much music. But I'm glad that you weren't talking so much this time. <laughs> what the heck? So I got one on one extreme and one on the other extreme. And I'm going, why don't you two get together and figure out how I should do this? Because that might be a little more constructive. Because having those two extremes, I didn't know where I should go because are they speaking for the whole audience or what? So you really have to think how many people are telling you you need to change your channel and the things you do. If it's just one or two people popping out of the crowd saying you need to fix this, ignore it. It's just like those comments. Ignore it. Do what feels right to you. Exactly. Yeah. At the at the end of the day, you need to be doing what you're doing, whether it's a, a video like what Sai was talking about. You need to be doing what you're doing, where you should be getting your advice from. isn't from people commenting. It's from places you should go. Like I said, I mentioned Nick Nimmin. I mentioned right. Brian G. Johnson. You know, yeah. go to those. They're putting out information. They're not putting out information specific to you. They're not criticizing you. They're telling you what you should be doing, what you, this is what you should be doing. Now, again, you could, you could have a video that's all music where you, where you start and talk and then it's nice, peaceful little kayak around. And you know what, if, if that wasn't what someone came to your video to watch, then they probably clicked off of it anyways. Right. Yeah. Um, so again, you could have, you could have a combination of different things. I mean, variety is, you know, especially if you're, if, you know, and for more part, Sty stays right in his genre. He stays right where he is at in the out. <laughs> Except on out my streams. Out. Except on the streams. Our streams are mad because he's got these ridiculous people that join him up on his streams that have that go every other direction. But it's fun. And those streams are intended to be variety. They are. They're intended to be variety. So anybody that comes in there... It doesn't take them long to figure out, oh, well, they'll talk about the outdoors, but a lot of other stuff, too. They're just having fun. So, What's up, Donald Morris? How you doing? Hey, Donald. Hey, Donald. Well, and, that, and that's like with you, Phil. Your, your video work the last several months here now and your streams are becoming, your genre is becoming wider. You've got such a diverse audience from so many different walks of life, and you're, you've been touching on so many different things, and it's keeping everybody interested. You know, it, we, it's human nature. You want to hear something new, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you see a different little side of your host, people love that. They, want, they just want you to be you, you know, because that's where the interest comes from. Two comments. One, it makes it challenging for chats when panel members use weird names we may not know them and cannot use to talk to them. Well, that's true. I mean, some people are just being fun with it. I mean, you can't criticize someone by putting a weird name up here. I always usually put my name up here, but sometimes I put something different up here. Yeah. And that's what makes put that's what makes being able to fill your own name in here fun, right? Because at the end of the day, if they didn't want this to be fun for you they wouldn't allow you to fill in anything other than your name would be pre-filled in your channel name, right. or your personal right. name would be pre-filled in for you and you couldn't change it. What's nice is that I can, if I could change this to Sty 2.0, if I want to see and StreamYard eight months ago was contemplating making it your, whatever you logged into StreamYard with, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, it would take that account name and put it down there. It wouldn't let you pick a name. It would put your account name there. So for me, it would be Stein North. I, I wouldn't have a choice. Um, but yeah, having a choice is fun. You know, Phil's, Phil has a blast with it. <laughs> well, and, and again, nine times out of 10, I use my own channel name. But every now and then, I'll make it something different. It isn't always Stein North 2.0. That usually comes later in a stream anyways. But yeah. you know, but I have had other things up there. I've had outdoor, I've had all sorts, Chaga Hunt. I mean, all sorts of weird things that I've used that for. What's up, yeah, Brandy? Yeah. How you doing, man? 
Which yeah, I have recognize a name you, you had for a long time ago. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, saucy Shane. I didn't say hi <laughs> earlier. Hey, Phil. How are you? I'm not, I'm, not I'm not thinking of the one you're thinking of, but okay. <laughs> it, it probably isn't appropriate for here anyways, right? Nope. What's up, Squishy? How you doing, Squishy <laughs> Unicorn? Hey, uh, Squishy. See, I like coming on sometimes during the daytime because you get people in here that you don't always get at the nighttime because... You know, well, not everybody is as crazy as Ann. That's the name, Crazy Ann, and stays up until you know two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning to see us people in the in the you know states. So, but I love you guys. You're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you, of course. And yeah. she's my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, son. <laughs> you better behave. <laughs> she never. She's always keeping an eye on me. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm supposed to be out in the woods right now. Are you really? Yeah. I hope this isn't out in the woods all day today. Woods. That didn't work out. Yeah. Well, I'm supposed to be at work today. That didn't work I out. I know. Either. I watched your stream this morning, by the way. <laughs> I, I thought, could not oh, believe oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and here you're talking about, you know, be careful. Don't, don't start getting too far off on rants and stuff. And, I did that on my stream last night. I apologize to anybody that was there. But here you're talking about that. And what did you do this morning? He ranted this morning. But he had all the justification in the world to rant. And he was making a good point, too, about how we have to deal with people that they, they can easily screw up your day. <laughs> I mean, other people can really screw up your day for you. And, and of course, I wasn't ranting or I wasn't talking about any YouTubers or anything. I wasn't doing no, anything that was no. going to hurt me on here. You were ranting I, about life having its way with you. Oh, right? absolutely. Was that was. <laughs> yeah, I was not a happy oh. camper this morning. Because again, no. what people don't, what you don't realize when you make an appointment with someone, I don't care what it is, you make an appointment with someone. This person on the other end is adjusting their schedule. In order to try to best fit you in, right? right. There, for me, I spent most a lot of time yesterday doing what I had to do for this person. I not only went to bed at an earlier time and didn't do the things I would have rather have done, which was stayed up late, hung out with my friends, and everything else. I also woke up at five forty-five in the morning, thinking about what I needed to get done for this. All the anticipation. Couldn't go back to sleep. Went into work early. Getting all this stuff done. What's up, Kimberly Ferris? What's up, Joey? Joey, how you doing, man? Just to have this person call me and say, you know what? Can't we're gonna put this on ice. Oh. You know? Yeah, I, mean, I bet you wanted to put them on ice. <laughs> oh well, you know, I just I just took his answer at first and hung up and you know I listened to him and said, all right, well, you know, I came in, blah blah blah. He said, I'm sorry for inconveniencing you, blah blah blah, and I left it at that. And then so I was getting ready, just as I was getting ready to leave. I want to say hi to someone real quick. What's up, Food Fight Showdown? How are you doing? Um, just as I was getting ready to leave, I'm thinking, you know what? I better call this guy back, right? Because I don't want them to maybe have made a, a split decision that they weren't going to do it and then be driving home or be home. And an hour later, it's like, you know what? We talked a little bit more, and you know, this is what we want to do. Now, I, would yeah. I have turned around and gone back? Yeah. But I didn't. Yeah. But I wanted to make sure before I left that you know, first of all, see if there was a real reason. Sure. Um, want to see if there was a real reason. Um, and again, wanted to make sure. Now the person now, and I'm getting a little bit more information from the person. They might actually because they've got negative. You know, they went way over on their miles on the lease. They might actually be considering a used car, which I might be able to help them with when I get back. So. Sure. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy, but see, see, and the thing is, under normal circumstances, everything's open. There's no restrictions. A regular business day, something like that. You would have been at work anyway, right? And you would have said, "Oh, well, they just freed up some time. I'll I'll make some sales contacts instead of sitting with them." Well, the, this was a special trip in to help them and then to have them drop you. 
Well, that's, I, that's such a bummer. That's such a bummer. I think that's why she had her husband or her fiance call me is because we spent so much time on the phone yesterday and she understood. As a matter of fact, I didn't want to do this for her until Monday when I right. knew I was going to be back in the store for eight hours. Right. And she's like, no, 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 no. My job is sending me out of town for the week. And I want to get this done now because I'm already going over, over on my miles. And I would like to do this tomorrow. And it's like, oh, as much as I don't want to go in tomorrow, I am going to be helping someone out. I will be selling a car. Okay. You know what? I'll go in. And then just to have someone, um, you know, she couldn't even call me back again. She had to have her fiance call me to tell me that, you know, she's not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're, you know, for whatever reason. But again, even with her comments later in the day, I believe that she was conferring with him the entire time. And still made that decision, you know, at 830 in the morning to call me and tell me um, they're not coming in. What's up, Bud's Coins? Good to see you here. If you guys haven't hit the thumbs up, if you're here, you got 35 people in the house. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, hit the thumbs up. That would be great. Share us out. Share us out. But again, um, like I started this whole stream off, you know, talking about how to build your YouTube community. That's what we're doing right here, right now, right? Crazy Ann from Norway. Sam, our singer, musician, entertainer from Alaska, and Stein North, our bushcrafter, outdoorsman, and whatnot from the whatnot Wisconsin. From Wisconsin, you know. Again, we we built a community, and then again, we got a community of people in the chat over here, guys. People that are here all the time: Kimberly Ferris, Bradley Whitworth, Donald Morris. I can go on and on and on about all the people that are in the chat. That that's that's part of this community too. You guys being here, you guys doing what you're doing and being here and supporting us uh, definitely makes, well, when I see a video pop up by one of you guys, makes me want to go over there and watch it for sure. What's up, Ginger Locks? Mom, Peggy, how you doing? So so it's all, everything you do on here is important. Again, you go, you, go, you only have so many hours out of the day that you can do stuff on YouTube, and I understand that. You know, I've had way too much time lately. Um you know, and I can do a lot more than I would no that I normally am able to do. But I'll do everything I can to keep doing what I've been doing and, and keep visiting my friends and doing the things that, you know, grow a community, grow a channel. So I hope you guys grow yours, you know. You know, I, th I think one thing that a lot of times is underrated is that chat. I mean, that's a big growth area is that chat. Just showing up, you know, pick a couple of channels to hang out at and get in the chat, get involved and interact with all the other people in that chat. Everybody that's watching, not just the chatters, are seeing you. They're seeing you. And if they see good engagement with you and other people in the chat, it draws interest to them. And they'll say, well, I'm going to check that channel out, see what this person's about. And so, so yeah, participating in the chat is, is a good growth. Yeah. Cause a lot of us at first glance, you wouldn't subscribe to us just by looking at us. I'm just saying, you know, speaking for yeah. myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> or by the name of my channel, you know, everything spicy. I mean, come on, spicy. All right. I've got, you know, I don't have a gallbladder. I don't have this. I don't like spicy food of this. You know, you might it might not interest you. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> you see me, huh? Be That's lady. a good way to do it, Carpy Chris. You know, or 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 just watch. But again, when you're driving, that changes everything. You know, I comment yeah. when I drive, and I shouldn't. You know, um, yeah. But if you can do, if you have different things that you do and get engaged, that's fine. If not, I completely, you know, I commend someone that can restrain um from commenting on something they find interesting that's live when they're driving so i have a very hard time doing that oh and then my oldest boy on one of my very first streams i had an ah. audience member super chat me 20 bucks my very first super chat and what's my son do because i gave him a blue wrench he's using voice to text and whatever he said 
hoping that it'd be a comment. What it did instead was it hid this guy's message in his super chat, and then he put him on a on a timeout. And he, he's on there. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. I said, you can't kick people out that are paying. <laughs> I mean, don't do that. <laughs> there. Look at there. There you go. All right. Ah. Let the fat man pull up his britches. All right. Got to do it. All right. Where's our marker? Humpity 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 hump. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and twerk. Come on now. <laughs> oh, come on now. That's a slow one. Hey. <laughs> oh, you, you got to let him warm up there. Eh? Now let me warm up a little. He needs to warm up. I'll throw out He's a hip or something. Get things stretched out a bit. Uh, there, yeah. <laughs> uh, What's up, Eileen Valu? How are you doing? Hump for heats in the house. What's up, guys? How you doing? <laughs> Before you left work. <laughs> thank you for sharing out. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Bradley, you're yeah. And that's another thing too is, <laughs> is share share. Oh, I paid share for it, Bradley. <laughs> when you sit, when you see people that are out in the audience and oh. and then you see that oh they got a stream going go over and watch it for a while make sure to share them out sharing out that's the hardest part man is getting people, is caring. Get people to come on over because youtube doesn't do that good of a job of bringing people to your channel so the people that come to your channel Encourage them, share it out, and bring some of your friends and acquaintances over here for a while, you know, and that'll help your channel grow to have a lot of share outs. Yeah, I love it when I'll go to somebody's stream and, and they've got it's like the number of people watching is just fixed, and then I'll I'll do my share out, and all of a sudden I'll see, boom, 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 it goes up, half a dozen watchers and all of a sudden you see people from that follow you at your channel showing up in the chat you're going yeah that share work it brought a few people in you know i love seeing that sharing is caring yeah oreo that's yeah it is and it's you know what the heck it takes only a couple seconds to share it out Oops. Oops. The pepper disappeared. Yeah, that is why I said oops. Oh, it's a curve. Love you guys. Yeah, hey. No more laughing his ass off. Yeah. So they died a little bit. We love you too. So what? So where, where else are you going to go today, Stai? Out in the woods? I, yeah, I was going out in the woods today, but I had a couple of things that came up that I was getting off way to, to much too late of a start. So I said, no, I'm going to do, I got to do some video work this afternoon and stuff. So I'm going to do that today and I'll go out tomorrow. I'm supposed to have yeah. a call with a certain viewer tomorrow, but. I'm going to have to message him and tell him, no, can't do it. Can't do it. I'm going to be out in the woods. So, um, hmm. It's supposed to be a pretty nice day tomorrow. So <clears throat> no rain and in the low 50s. So that should be nice. <laughs> so Phil, since you're talking about your this morning, like since you're live or this afternoon for you, um, are you going to be going live tonight? or? Yep. Okay, good. Yep, I'll be going live tonight. I'll come on here unless unless you want to go live. No, actually, I just I have that fifteen minute show slot again on Facebook on that show. What time oh, is that? Yeah, okay. Uh, seven thirty-five my time, so eleven thirty-five. Oh, you. okay. 
Well, hey, if, we, if we'll, we'll yeah. do what we did last time, right? Yeah, you can always pop yeah. it up on the, like, yeah. pop yeah. it up on your panel. Well, well I can pop it up here, but I would recommend that everybody go to Facebook uh, as and the, at least get over there so yeah. that it shows have, that they were there. Yeah, have two devices going at the same time would be or leave me and go watch her until it's over with. So I'll put the group. Well, you can have both screens yeah. in the same time, like we yeah. do. Yep, yeah. yep. It worked good last time. Yeah, it does. I was over there watching it on Facebook and then jumping back to you and back and forth. And here you're watching it right on your channel. And I thought, oh, I'm already on Facebook watching it. So I'll just. Well, you can watch it there, Shuri. It's just to uh, hit the like button and support Samantha if you can. You're a heat. You're one of the he bitches, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if you don't do what she says, yeah, you get a spanking. You get a spanking. Hey, I just want to spank you. You deserve it. Good lip whipping. <laughs> we used to always call those lip whippings. Lip whipping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everything spicy. How do the Carolina make your stomach feel? I plan to plant some in my garden this season. Uh, Carolina Reapers, it's important when you do anything with a Carolina Reaper, consuming it in any way, shape, or form. It's important that you have something in your stomach. Um, there are certain things I try to have in my stomach, but it's important to have something in your stomach um, so that you don't cramp up, so that you don't you know, ruin most of your day with the Carolina <laughs> Reaper. I'm kind of used to it myself. I can have a little bit of something in my stomach and have one Carolina Reaper and be pretty good. But if you're if it's if it's your first time, uh, I would definitely would recommend that you uh, have plenty in your stomach. Consider it a challenge to eat a Carolina Reaper and have plenty of food uh, in your stomach. So, if not, you will lay on the floor for like a couple hours, like people do. It's not nothing worse. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I if I were to eat <laughs> one on an empty stomach. And had nothing to add to my stomach that would help me. Yeah, I would lay on the floor. It's just it's that simple. You'll go through capsaicin cramps and things like that. Milk milk does help. Again, usually for me, um, the one time I did it, I ate three Car dry Carolina Reaper halves, and I was three hours into a stream and wasn't thinking, and the cramps started hitting me. I went upstairs, drank like a glass and a half of milk, and it pretty much helped me out. So, but. Uh, one time it's make you worse. Was that the pucker butt or uh, the colon cleaner? No, it was the pucker butt stuff. Yeah. 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 Oh, that and, was bad. And I, and I had f some food in my stomach, but I don't know what what was it was it what it was with that that day, but that hurt me bad. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, I was laying down on the floor for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was nice, though, that, yeah, that you'd raise your hand once in a while, so we knew you were still alive down there. Yeah. Oh, when you were on your knees and laying in the seat of your chair, I, I thought, oh God! And that the level of cramps I've had are nothing compared to what Phil's gone through. But I know when you're going through that, that's a cramp that you don't. It, yeah, the first time you get it, you go, "That ain't right." That's not right. That's a bad, bad feeling. And it doesn't really matter what position you're in. You just want to be in a position where you don't have to move. Right. You just don't want to, you just don't want your body moving. It hurts so much. I love eating hot peppers, habanero. I can handle, but I'm ready for the next level. <clears throat> well, again, there are plenty of places out there where you can get dried stuff right now. It's hard to get fresh pods right now, bud. Um, so that's that's the hardest thing to do. Again, but you are coming into pod seasons or pepper seasons. So you should be able to, you know, start seeing some fresh peppers out there. If you want to up your game, bud, um, eat more habaneros. All right. So right now you're eating one habanero and you're like, ooh, I got this whooped. Don't eat two habaneros. See how many ab – go, go, do your, give yourself your own little eating contest. And yeah. see how many habaneros you can eat in under a minute. Yeah. You know? See if you can eat 25, then see if you can eat 25 habaneros. Then you're ready for the hotter uh, hotter peppers. 
And again, and then there's people like, you know, Squishalicious here where, you know, she'll never, you know, she doesn't get into the spicy stuff, which is fine. Have you ever had fresh monkey chilies? Never heard of fresh monkey chilies. But not that I've, you know, I'm supposed to have heard of everything. You know, I just, you know, I've never heard that. No. Well, that's a good reason to disappear, OG son. What's up, Blake? How you doing, man? <laughs> um, what's up, Princess? How you doing? Got pineapple habaneros growing. That sounds good. Don't think I've ever had a pineapple habanero. Blake. Just make sure you got something in your stomach. Even with habaneros, I you know I've gotten I've gotten some cramps, not as bad. I've gotten gramps from habaneros on an empty stomach. So at the end of the day, you know, depending on how empty that stomach is, you put something in there hot without something else in there, you know, you can cramp up a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, prep is everything. I learned that from Phil. Prep is everything. And, and, and it's the right types of things. You know, I, I usually will have, you know, a, a peanut, if I'm going to do something that I know I'm going to, like a, a banana, peanut butter. I mean, because sometimes I don't. I mean, sometimes I come down here for a show uh, in the evening and I'll have a couple, you know, maybe have a, just a regular sandwich or something. And I know that I'm not going to overdo it. Um, I'm not going in there do, to do 25 Car or 26 Carolina Reapers or I'm not going in down here to chug five bottles of hot sauce. So what I do for that is, you know, next level prepping as opposed to what I just do to come down here and have a few, you know, Carolina Reapers or something. So, see you this evening, Elisa. Oh, I always, you know, I I tell people one thing. I always try to make sure I let people know about what I do. Is I always warn people. You know, one, I tell them how to prep. Okay. Two, I always tell you if you have any problems or have had any problems from here back to here and anywhere in between. I don't recommend you do any of this stuff, you know, because let's say you had an ulcer or you had stomach problems or issues 10 years ago, seven years ago, right? You're feeling great. You're doing good. You know what? I'm going to try this spicy stuff. I'm going to try this, you know, world's hottest chocolate that Sty did, or I'm going to try this, or I'm going to try that. Wouldn't it be horrible if you did that and you re aggravated that problem that you haven't experienced for 10 years? Oh, yeah. That, that would be awful. I mean, I can't, like I said, right now I don't have any knee pain. I can't imagine. I try to be really good to not re-aggravate that problem because, you know, hey, I, it's it's nice not walking around with knee pain. What's up, Ghostly Entertainment TV? How you doing, man? Hey. As Me far as I go, a little sweet chili in my noodles. So, see, there you go. That's just what you like, you know? The more I think about it, the more I think I want Thai food. But I got no Thai food places around here. So, damn, the pier. No, don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I have to go like 30 minutes to like go to something and it's all shitty. Rapping. Well, that's because you live in a third world country out in the middle of nowhere. Can you sip it? What? <laughs> Hello, Ghostly Entertainment. Oh. See you, B-Lady. Have a good one. Oh, yeah. Your weekend. Yeah, have a good weekend, guy. You realize but you don't have this. You, don't you have realize this. that Smokey and the Band is not a new release, right? <laughs> For me, it could be released like yesterday. For me, it's like Kevin. <laughs> I can see that movie every day. And I will not get bored. No. Nice yeah. music, nice cars, nice truck, nice man. Oh, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> nothing like nothing like a classic, huh? Like classic. <laughs> That's not Bert Reynolds. <laughs> well, you know, I got, I got the new younger version over here. You know, well, I got that one too. Version. You know, I got the younger version. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were going to get through this one. I thought we were going to maybe, maybe get through this one without a guest appearance, you know. But, 
Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's all just I love you, of, it's part of the whole <laughs> thing that we do, you know? It's the whole, you know. You didn't think, you didn't really think we would get through without uh well, I thought if you stayed distracted enough, maybe. But yeah, you know, he, he's always right there. You know, he's 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 hanging out watching. He's not Kinda in the got, fridge this time. That's no, he, he, he didn't show up in the refrigerator today. So, or in the pantry, <laughs> or in the pantry, or or the number of other places that he is. And uh, we haven't seen yet. <laughs> <laughs> I got to leave something open, you know. So there's got to be some reason to watch the video when it does finally come out. So, I I think I think he need, I think Sty 2.0 needs to deliver a few more or um, visit a few more places before there's a, or before there's a final video released. Or mm -hmm. the other thing um, I was thinking is see you later, Carpy Chris. Have a good one. The, the other thing I was thinking is maybe you know release what I've got now and then. If it, if, it, if it does good, have a follow-up one. Or even if it doesn't do good, just have a follow-up one with more places. Um, well, in, at, in a private type situation, I'm going to suggest one to you, Phil, and I know you'll do it. I, you know, at, yeah, I'm throwing myself out on the mercy of the court, but uh, <laughs> I think it would be a funny one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've thought about taking you grocery shopping with me. That, I, but what would be good? Oh, about, what would be good could, about taking you grocery you shopping with me oh. and putting and putting you in the child seat? Having a family member, one of my kids from afar, videotape the look on all their people's faces that would see you in the cart. Can you imagine? Oh. No, not you. So, start, you, know, you start taking him out in the public. I don't know. I, that's oh no no no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The looks on people's faces because they'll be looking at you. They'll just take one look at the sty head, and then it's all looking at you. Who is this guy? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we want some yes, Sonny. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we watched a few of your stuff things today, Ghostly. I mean, they're all nice short little clips and whatnot. So I watched three or four of your things today and just left some nice comments for you. What's up, Wanston? How you doing, man? Good to see you, bro. Been good, man. Been very good. Hmm. See, see, Watson and um, Leo get it, man. Going live, you ain't going live, having different people up on your panel, going to other people's channels, and being being interesting, right? That's why I like Watson and uh, Leo so much. Those two guys, they're interesting. You know, they're everything they're that funny. I'm not at times is interesting. They're different. I'm funny. I'm funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> Pitbull, <laughs> cops asking, would you both get out of the car? <laughs> oh, yeah. Take your hand out of the dummy, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the dummy. <laughs> oh, I do all the time. Mm -hmm. And still hits the ground. <laughs> uh, you dummy. Shouldn't have taken that out there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it'd be funny if he was on a like a tripod just just from the neck up showing through the passenger window and then be able to have him turn his head and look at cars as they're going by. Or you oh, have a stoplight and have him turn and stare at the driver in the next car. <laughs> well, that's a big thing for me is not putting him down in the seat because then he can't see over the dash and no one else can see him. Right. So that's why he hasn't been in the front seat with me yet because, again, I want to get him up high enough where other people can see him, so I, I can. I told you my... what you could do. I told you. I told how you, you can do that. You're not my mom. You have. You're not the boss. She thinks she is. <laughs> you you tell me all the time oh, that I'm your mom. Yeah, mom. You're not the boss of me. You're you told me that I was your mom. I love even that. told you. Yeah, I told you, it. mom, because how you talk. I you love that when me. I hear when I hear an older person <laughs> use that line. You're not the boss of me. 
You're not the boss of me. Just say, yeah, you're not the boss of me. I could do something so simple, but they wouldn't do it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, what? It is simple. What? What? Go, repeat yourself then. What's no? Simple? I was telling that here. Fuck it. <laughs> Oh, she's always trying to help, David. You know, mm. she's that person that she'll tell you numerous things, and then one of them will come up being right. And she's like, see, I told you. Really? That's, yeah. That's why I think, doggone it. The, I feel you. Really? Got yeah. You got to have the right toys. I mean, you need one of these puppies. Oh, that's what I. Ann sent me and something it, yesterday that I could put the head on. It, 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 mounts, it mounts right on your tripod, and it's got a yeah. remote control, and the head would turn about 180 degrees real slow back and forth. No, this one, this one, follow where you go, like 360. That yeah, thing I yeah, told him. That's the ones that follow so, you. But yeah. if you got a dummy head, and you just like want, that. and they're just seeing the head, this will make it look like he's looking to the left, and then he'll turn and he'll look to the right. And with that remote control, you can turn him farther to the right, so he's looking right at the car next to you and back. Have him looking straight out the window. So his head would be moving, and you could have both hands on the steering wheel, and that th th that'll make him think, "What the." How's that thing looking at me? He's hanging onto the steering wheel. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could be interesting. I, Part of I, me just thinks if I just could shove a broomstick up in that thing and, and, and have it at no, the right I'll, length, and have it the right length, as long as I had something going through my headrest on the passenger side, which would keep it centered. If I could have a hand on the steering wheel, I could take the broomstick and just turn it one way or another. That? With my hand, right, and turn it there or back. Yeah, keep it simple. Uh, yeah, and then after you get used to doing it, I want to see you pull up next to a squad car and do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he go live so we can see it. Yeah. Well, so you got yeah, I'm trying to help him get that viral video, you know. Yeah, love to see a cop pull him over because he's got that old fart sitting there in the passenger seat. Then they can live stream you right, right to the jail. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'd, have to, I'd have to move my where my phone sits in my truck or something like that too. I'd have to probably move it to the left of me so that way it's shooting across. You can see me, you can see Sty, and then you can see the car next to me. Yeah. So you can get that expression of the other driver when he turns and looks and <laughs> <Gotta> look <laughs> <at> that old <laughs> part. <laughs> Yeah, you need a second camera. That'd be nice. I've I've been yeah, I've needed a second camera for a long time. Oh. Yep. Fun, fun, fun. We like to have fun. <laughs> a lot of times at my expense, but you know, fun's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Not like anybody outside of my house is gonna know that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get going, guys. My, my son does uh, Friday Zoom meetings with his classroom soon, so oh, yeah, I gotta get the computer. We'll catch Have you, you got this gift though. yet? Yeah. What's that? We'll Has catch you got later. This on. Gift? No, gift? no, not yet. It Weird. takes it takes some time. Uh, um, but I'll tell Jade to check the mail again today. Yeah. So. Do that. All right. Much love, everybody. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh God. Oh hey, God. God. <laughs> also the oh, skinny in here. Yeah, and I'm no skinny, so that's just weird. <laughs> I'm no skinny. <laughs> Don't be squeezing me sometimes. Yeah. No. <laughs> Get some hands from Dollar Tree around Halloween, but it's not Halloween now, people. That's that's what makes it good. I mean, because around Halloween, I mean, that would be something that would be expected, right? 
So having that happen, see, it almost makes me think when I get the second I get done here, I got to go do take care of that, and then I got to go for a drive. Got to yeah, yeah. get the then setup. Then pull over. Yeah. Then you get pulled yeah. over. <laughs> oh, that would be just so damn. Just funny. be sure that you push the live stream button. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh God, I wouldn't want to miss that. That'd be funny. Mm-hmm. Put the fishing line behind the headrest as you're riding. Pull the fishing fish drink, and he waved to people, huh? Oh, oh yeah! If you yeah. put the fishing string on, you can like put it up there so you can wave to people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like you did with the mask that day, you know. Yeah, yeah I was thinking the that wall, you had those fake hands and you taped all the fingers down except for one. Virtual dinner party. <laughs> and then you have that on a stick and you pull up the ne next to somebody and have that old part turn and look at them. Um, and then when the driver locks eyes with them, you lift that hand up and it's flipping them the bird. That old bastard, jump out of the car, road rage. <laughs> and find out it's just a head. <laughs> Good to see you here, virtual dinner party. How are you? Mm -hmm. He likes spicy too. He does like spicy too. Mm -hmm. Teresa. Teresa, what's up, girl? Hey, sexy mama. You lies in all the emojis, or at least two, right? Apparently, <laughs> apparently there's some hot boobies going on. Yeah. Look at that one. <laughs> a few peppers, hot. a bunch of boobies, and sty. And then sty. <laughs> I, I don't mind at all. Could have put me up, John. How you doing? It will be somewhere, but I'm good. <laughs> hey, hey, John. John and Jan, Adventures in the Heartland. Hey, John. Hey, Bunny. <laughs> Scotch bonnets. Yep. Scotch bonnets. Um, from what I understand and from what I've had. Scotch bonnets are a little hotter than your habanero. They're kind of a more of a um, habanero grown over uh, in the United Kingdom or across the pond. So um, some Scotch bonnets get a little hotter than the habanero, but for the most part, what I know about Scotch bonnets are well, are they you know they're mostly um, an overseas type thing, sort of like the Armageddon chilies. Armageddon chilies are kind of like a Carolina Reaper, but they're not a Carolina Reaper. And the Armageddon chilies you typically find. You know, overseas, you know, England, New Zealand, Australia, places like that. So, oh, Dojo still watching. Dojo, Dojo, Dojo. Hey, Dojo, you want to come up? And yes, there. No, you don't have to. I can. Yes, there. Want to come up? Yeah. <laughs> I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told I told her she needs to be more engaged. Well, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, no, people like to know what Anne's thinking and everything else. And she, she has sometimes she has a tendency to get busy with, you know, helping us run the channel and the chat and everything else. And she's not always engaged. So <laughs> I told her I'd help her and do some things. And I just sent that to Dojo. So. I just said it to Dojo, so it was okay. a little long down my list, but yeah, I said it, so he got to know. <laughs> yeah, the Carolina Reapers, Um, again, they're, obviously those are more plentiful over here in the States than they are overseas. I'm sure there's people overseas growing those now, now but Armageddon chilies, I would think, now again, I don't know a whole lot about Armageddon chilies, but I would think they're probably more plentiful across the pond. Are you from, uh, are you from, UK or Canada? Like virtual dinner party? Yeah, I think it's, it's Canada up there. Does it? it? Um, you should try a tequila. Hello seed. from Canada. Yeah, it's from Canada. Okay. Well, I've had clamato, clam and I'm not very good with clam juice and tomato juice. It's not it's not something that I like. So. Yeah, I didn't care for clamato. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was that was kind of uh, challenge stuff. And now that I'm not doing the clam juice anymore, not that I can't do the clam juice, spicy sauce and ice cream. We were doing that last night. I prefer yeah, not to I'm go back to clam juice. What's up, arcade? Arcade. Hey, meow. Yeah, that that red sauce that was something. Yeah. Clamato is definitely a Canadian. <laughs> thing, huh? 
Well, I mean, you know, again, we have it here in the States. Bluebird houses. Oh. Sounds Clamato. fun. I drink I Clamato did. ever since it was developed in my hometown. Well, there you go. I'm Then I'm sure you could tell us all the health benefits of Clamato. What I think I could tell you is when I was drinking that stuff is there was a ton. I think it was sodium that was a ton of it in there. And you got your you got your daily recommended amount of sodium in a bottle of clam, um, clam juice with a half an ounce. So there were when you had a bottle of clam juice, it was considered to be eight servings of clam juice. And then when you were looking on there, how much was in per serving, it was like, oh my gosh, the amount of stuff. Of course, I was sometimes chugging two or three bottles at a time. So, what's up, Nomad Unbroken? How you doing, man? Oh, me dibble. Vinegar on ice cream? No, that's nope. one nope. I ain't interested in. Nope. Yeah, that, that. Yep. <laughs> Far too much sodium. I don't drink it. Yeah. I was. I started off um, virtual dinner party. I started off doing it uh, as a challenge. One of you know a guy on uh, another channel. You know, it was a it was a thing of <laughs> clam juice, sauerkraut, and some habaneros. It was a combination of doing all those things separately and washing it down with the clam juice. And then I just started doing the clam juice more often because it grow, it seemed to gross everybody out. So I started doing it more often. And um, I kind of switched, switched from clam juice to eggs. Eggs are uh, eggs are less expensive to do. And I find that eating raw eggs, whether with or without the shell, uh, equally grosses people out. So Hey, buttermilk no, is cheap. Shell is worse. Buttermilk is cheap. Oh, God, it's scratching my nose. Uh, <laughs> no, I want. I want to lose weight. Oh, I got you, man. Everybody Don't eat first, ice cream. <laughs> yeah, vinegar on ice cream. Malt vinegar, but ah, uh, look at here. What's up, Dojo? Dojo at work. Dojo, or, look at oh, that's place. a different place. Hey. I are you home still? I had my speakers down. I couldn't hear nothing. <laughs> ah. Mm. Clam juice got a lot of omega three and sixes. So I, I, I definitely had all my omega threes and sixes. And me double talking about the malt vinegar. You know what? I liked malt vinegar. And there's a place here called Penn Station that makes subs, and they have their own fries that they do. And putting malt vinegar on the fries before you put the ketchup on them. Oh, I like that. Sty in his buttermilk stocks. Mm -hmm. I got a fresh carton in the fridge. What's up, Cemetery 76? You have fun with that. Oh, I, I, wish you, I wish you in it well, too. Yeah, sodium's a big thing. And one thing I noticed when I lost my weight before, uh, I took in very little sodium. So the things that I enjoy, like my pretzels and snacks and all those little things that have all that sodium in them, even beef. no bear? Well, I haven't had any. You know, you'd think a guy that hadn't drank in, you know, 13 months yeah, would lost some weight, right? Yeah, but you did. I haven't that lost time. weight. Not in a year. That time you did. That time you did. You have yeah, put but I was something on day, again. Man. Yeah, but you put something on What's up, on computer again. chick? How you doing? Just a little bit. Buttermilk is good, Phil. You don't know Midwest good drinking. Nope, but I don't care to there, uh, computer chick. I just, you know. I, that is one thing I will never build a taste for. As much as I drank that clam juice, and it, I got to a point where it wasn't it didn't wasn't that gross. But I had it recently, oh, a few months ago. I had one bottle, and it was it was uh, it's horrible. Oh, yeah. I well, I usually don't add sh add sugar to my food. Usually, if I add something to my food that someone's made for me, it's usually um, just pepper that I'll add to something. I usually don't add extra salt to things, but I don't stay away from salty treats, which is bad. So, speaking of treats, oh, sorry, wrong guy. <laughs> oh, thanks, Di. Lovely, lovely. Would you like a glass? Oh yeah, you know how I love glasses of, of buttermilk. What are you eating, Dojo? What is it? Is it jerky of some sort? What's a cambanasi? 
Cabanasi. I don't know. Is it, is it a type of jerky? So I don't know. I've never had one before. It's the first time I've had it. Oh, okay. I saw it in the shop and so thought that looked tasty. Huh. Ah. Hmm. Like a pepperetti? Hey, Kim. The arcade. Arcade arcade sounds like he knows. Mm, nom, nom. Mm -hmm. I'm drinking my lunch. <laughs> oh, you're, Is that you're lunch? drinking that stuff. <laughs> this look up, Phil. <laughs> I put sports side down now. <laughs> I hope you choked on it. <laughs> hope you choke on it. <laughs> uh, well, oh, yeah. If I, had some venison, good. if I had some venison jerky, oh, yeah. And some escargot? Mm. Escargot. Escar <laughs> Escar <-not>. Escarnot. <laughs> escargot. I agree. <laughs> S car snot. Right. I mean, again, I wouldn't mind trying it if it was properly prepared by someone who knows what they're doing with garlics and butter right. and all that good stuff. Eating it out of the can from Walmart was probably the worst possible way I could try <laughs> snails for my very first time. See, I never even knew they canned that stuff. I mean, some things just shouldn't be canned. Yeah, right. There go. No. Zip it, computer chip. For me, and mean to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she don't like that. Uh, she loves her stay. I know. They, they, you can have a close up there, computer chip. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> close up picture of stay playing out in the street. <laughs> Probably it's better than finding the red in the rich. That's right. Mm hmm. I like how Sty put that there. He was just being cool, hanging out, being cool, being cool, hanging out in the fridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 go talk to Sty, shall we? We'll bring him over. No. <laughs> no. 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 Carry him on by the nose. <laughs> Keep telling them quit carrying them by the nose. <laughs> he still has that blank stare. We got to work on that. That well, that's, the, that that's just pure, pure evil. <laughs> that's the thing nightmares are made out of. And then you got, and then you got the white eyes. No, that's the Walking Dead style. <laughs> that's why he's wearing the shades. Because he's, <laughs> he's a blind man. Computer ship <laughs> is going to kidnap little style. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds... <clears throat> yeah. No, what's that face? There's, yes, there's a slight resemblance there. <laughs> Expressionless face. <laughs> what do you mean about that? Oh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm still not sure if that's really healthy behavior, the things you're doing with that. Stay. Is anything healthy with that this guy do? No. <laughs> no. See, he no. really likes the fact he bought that six dollar foam head, styrofoam head, because now he don't have to wear it, see. That's right. It yeah. hasn't been on my head since. Right. No, it's yeah, been I need elsewhere. a I need a head head too. <laughs> been elsewhere. Thanks, I got all the I got all the hair in my mouth when I put that shit on. <laughs> oh, put that shit on, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this head, hair does kind of get all over the place. You have that problem at home, Ty? 
new. <laughs> I don't. I don't shed. I don't shed much. No. Well, this guy do. Creepy. You're not feeding them right. <laughs> His hair is falling out. You're not feeding them right. So, Dojo, are you at a different place today? The more you just uh, in, the, in the same place. Look. Oh, you're just a different angle then. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it does. Look. Oh, it's just maybe it's because it's just because it's daytime in there. That's weird. And, the then, light, yeah. and usually we're at a different angle where we're angled up more, looking more at the ceiling. We're usually looking up. At the least uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's what we're used to, right <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So you can go back the other way. That was fine. That was actually better. <laughs> What's up, Lady Reaper? How you doing, girl? Hey, Lady Reaper. I did reply hey, to your Lady first, um, request now. So, Lady Reaper, hi. Poor little Sai, all the perverted things he is doing. Through, yeah, well, hey, you know, he 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 can't tell anybody, so that's the best way to go about it. The wife says no, so Sai says yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that one night she says well, she happened to tune in and Stye's out putting the band. First time, too. I got him in here. I got the styrofoam head in there. And I got his guy got him down in my lap, and I'm putting the bandana on him for the first time, and that's when my wife catches the show. Yep. And, and, of course, we were talking about putting a hole where the mouse was and whatnot. That was the part that was probably, you know, a little weird, but, hey. <clears throat> <laughs> Too much head hair. He does. He does. But I've discovered if I take that head hair off with the mesh that's on there, it might ruin the whole thing. So he keeps. He gets to keep his hair. <laughs> yeah, oh, same here. So there. We're uh, till May. Uh, till yeah, May fifteenth. So when I go, I go back. When I go to work on Monday, <laughs> um, it'll be just uh, doors locked, just emailing, texting, calling people. It won't be anybody actually visiting unless they read something into it differently than why I read. It's still going to be curbside service. So, Yeah, our governor extended ours to May 31st. Whoa! Yeah. But you can go out in the parks now and the boat stuff, right? Because ours did. Nope. Wow. The only, thing, didn't... the only thing he opened were golf courses. <laughs> Piss me right off. That makes sense. Makes me want to go out and play golf on a course he's playing on. Now our golf Smack course in the head. Oh, did I forget the L four? <laughs> <laughs> our golf courses were opened, but no golf carts. You had to walk the course. Yep. So See, like they were arguing about that here, and he says, "No, no, the." You can use your own private carts. You can't use their rentals, but you can use your, if you've got a membership at a club and you've got a cart there, you can use your own private cart, but you can't use rentals, which our club, the one club here in town, you're not allowed. It, it's considered, um, what do they call it? Um, it's like group ownership. You can't have a private cart at their club. Really? You, you can't buy a cart and say, that's just there for me when I show up to play. No, you can have a part ownership in all the carts of the club. And you're guaranteed a cart when you show up. Right. But you basically, you pay them for the price of a cart. And you've got immediate access to a cart every time you show up. Okay. Amy Street. And, Amy and so, but they're not allowed to let you use them because you, it's not considered a privately owned cart, even though you paid for the price of a cart. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, the rules here suck. They have, a, yeah, no, they didn't open any boat landings, no state trails, nothing. Just, see all that all that open back up here. 
All they've opened up here with the DIY shops. What I'm interested in is here in about a half hour or so is finding out what the new count is for how many uh, cases in Michigan. Because in the last two, three days, we've gone back up over 1,200 cases. Yeah, I was so, looking at Michigan stats this morning. and Now, like here where I'm at, surrounding me, there's only three counties that had had any cases at all reported and and two deaths the county i'm in has one case no deaths but yet everything is closed up locked up tight you can't do crap and it's like and, and each one of those cases have been confirmed that they had traveled abroad around the country and then came back and they came back with it from somewhere else. So it's not like it's here and it's spreading all over. It's a total of five cases in the three counties that surround mine. Total of five cases and two deaths. It's a metro. Well, I mean, again, it's, it goes, I mean, it doesn't just pop up, it is spread. So that's why the northernmost counties in Michigan have little to no cases. Is because it all kind of started down in the yeah. way, you know, around Detroit, and it branches out from there. So that's, I mean, I mean, I understand part of their not wanting people to go north to their homes up north as much as people don't bring want. it up here, right? Because yeah, don't don't be don't be bringing that shit up here, right? Because right. There, obviously there are already people that had brought it up there, and then they find they had cases up there, and then you know you can get you know health of you know get other people infected and things like that. So. Give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. I don't think the casinos are losing that much because they've got all these online gamings, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, there, some of the bigger casinos are losing about $1.5 million per day. Excuse me. Huge what amount. the hell? Our two casinos, they had finally closed them down here and they're losing out they're losing out about a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars per day. Ouch. The one reservation with the last one I was employed with, I ran into a couple of the tribal leaders the other day in town and they were just they're thrilled. They said, Oh, Die that insurance you made us get on that casino. <laughs> they said, We're glad we kept that. And I said, Oh, really? And they said, Oh, well, yeah, because we're insured for uncontrolled shutdowns. And they said, We get 60% of our losses on those days. So there, and I said, They said, Well, I don't rem remember the cap I put on that insurance. And they said, Oh, the cap's ten million dollars. They said so. So yeah, they said they're not going to hurt quite as bad as some other casinos that didn't have themselves properly insured for that kind of. In it wasn't intended for that kind of incident. It was like if you had a fire and you're out of business for a week or two, that you could recover the losses, you know. But this is worse than a fire. I mean, <laughs> so at least that tribe's going to get about 10 million out of the deal on their insurance for being shut down. Um, but yeah, I drove by there when I went out roaming around the day before yesterday, drove by that casino. I look, I've never seen that parking lot totally empty. There was, there was, Four cars on the one side of the parking lot, four on the other, eight employees, all security <laughs> employees. That's all that's there. Place is locked up tight. Did you see that video I sent you today? Sorry. That you sent me today? No. I think, I, I, think I sent it. Yeah, I think I sent it to you. The, um, I think I did. I think I did. I think I did. <laughs> Welcome you know, back, Lady Reaper. There it is. Yeah. It says Anne sent me a video. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to watch that. That's five minutes long. Yeah. Oh, it's got the counts. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'll have fun watching that one. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's not fun, fun, but it's... Well, not fun. It'll be interesting to watch. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, don't you? So just you and me, Stai. That's nothing new. No, that's (laughs) spicy. That's not new. Then he Chewing shows on up. Something. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you've been upstairs now. Oh, I mm-hmm. grabbed something. I went to the bathroom first, but yeah. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. Just a Nutri Green bar. That's nothing. Something. More than I had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't eaten anything since yesterday when I ate my, ate my hot dog when I was schooling yeah. you. Yeah. One hot dog. One hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure the Vegas mayor has got probably getting a, a ton of pressure from um, the billionaires and all the casinos. Oh, boy, I tell you what. People that are invested in the casinos, they're hurting right now. Yeah. Hurting, hurting, hurting. Um, that, you talk about Vegas or Reno, you're talking... Probably close to a billion dollars a day. Wow. Billion dollars a day in lost revenue. Yeah, it's crazy though. Big you know I mean if if you're making it hand over fist when you close down you lose it hand over fist, right? Right. Oh my lord, I should have been out. No wonder we we got storm clouds out there. It's oh, we're, 59 degrees. Yeah, no, we we we've been told we were told last week that we um we can sell cars via the internet and do like curbside delivery, which we've been kind of doing it inside the service area where a computer ticks. So unless they've canceled that and told us we can't do that anymore and they've made that a restriction, no, we're going back to work. I don't want them to open. They don't listen. Well, again, that was uh, the increase that we had here in Michigan of coronavirus cases recently. People not listening, whether it was for, you know, uh, Easter or whatever it is, you know, people don't listen. People don't pay attention. Well, and that's what they're saying is, okay, we've had our two weeks since Easter and that's the, that, that's, usually the incubation of this thing where the symptoms really start to show is at the, about the two week mark. And they're saying that over Easter, a lot of people broke the rules. Mm -hmm. Families got together, they traveled, they shouldn't have. And, um, this thing, a computer saying, chick saying right here is true. We basically, if you're out in public, if you're in a public place, they're they're requiring, not requesting, they're requiring that you work. So when I go to work for eight hours and I'm doing everything I'm doing it there, I'm supposed to have a mask on the entire time I'm there. Now that's that's all fine and freaking dandy. You show me where here in my community that within 50 miles of me that I can buy a mask. They're not available. They're just not out there. So they're running Home, around homemade. With, uh, so they're running around with homemade, and everything I've seen about homemade, there now that mask could probably order that on Amazon. Yep. You're freaking me out, Phil. <laughs> he just smell his own. Well, well something smells perfumey. I'm like, what the hell that came from? It's not just. Uh, I just smelt something though that so something don't smelt right in that bag. No, it smelt perfumey like. Oh, oh. maybe your well, wife has like tried it out. You never know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe maybe call the other. <laughs> A little splash of Old Spice or something. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, you know, I was surprised my doctor, uh, my telephone 
doctor visit yesterday, she told me when I come in for my blood tests that they actually, they have you put the mask on and a <laughs> pair of gloves outside the door, <laughs> outside the door of the clinic, and they open the door for you and you enter in. And, and she said, and I just, I put in the order, they're going to, they're, they're supposed to give me 24 masks when I get there to take home. And she said, we have no trouble getting masks. She said that, um, and, and they're not that large of a clinic. And she says, we got so many masks and we can get more. She says, it's easy for us to get them now. But I told her, I said, because I had told her, I said, where the heck do I get masks? She says, nowhere around here. Nobody's got them. She said, um, she said, and 80% of the homemade mask people are using aren't masks. They're just, she says, that's BS. She says, that's my medical conclusion on homemade, most homemade masks. They're BS. <laughs> he said, no, wow. you need a disposable mask. She says people walk around with these cloth things on their faces saying, I've got a mask. She says, and all they're doing is spreading a damn virus around with them because they're taking them off, handling them. They're covered with the virus. They don't stop the virus. They're not designed to stop moisture from getting through them. She says the last thing they should be wearing is anything made of cotton because that holds moisture. When you breathe into it, the cotton holds the moisture. The virus just attaches itself right to it. Hmm. So, you know, and listening to a hmm. doctor say, no, you, you need actual N95s. Otherwise, you, you're really just, you're looking like you're protecting others and yourself. But she says it's just appearance. It's really not doing the job. And... Well, I guess that'd be any mask. I mean, if you're going to touch, the, if the stuff is hitting the mask, just like if it's hitting your handkerchief that's covering your right. face. If anything's hitting it, you're touching it. It's on there. It's not getting in your lungs. Right. At the end of the day, whether it be a handkerchief or be a respirator with two big filters on it, anything, if you're touching the outside of that and it's got anything on it, then you are oh. spreading other, you know, other parts of your body, your hands, your clothes, and things like that. I was, I was watching the House vote on that bill yesterday. For a while, every one of them congressmen that went up there had to hit, you know, I got to say my piece. They all go up there, they're wearing masks, and some of them got gloves, and they won't put their notebook on the podium or nothing. But I noticed 99% of them weren't wearing gloves. And the first thing they do is go up there and they go, grab that mic. And they pull the mask down. And then they go put the mic back put their mask back on and, they walk. and then the next guy comes up, pulls the mask down, grabs that mic. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, holy God, is that a disease ridden little thing sitting right there? Yep. They're all spitting it. The one guy's every word he's a and I'm like, oh my God. No, no. And that's our that's our government. <laughs> and they're voting on a virus bill. I mean, God, you guys, you're terrible. <laughs> and this one gal, she went up there. I laughed. I laughed. I had to laugh. She gets up there and she's taking all these wipes and she's wiping that whole microphone down, the whole thing, and that whole podium. And the president of the house is like, <clears throat> you know, you get one minute to talk and you're spending. Three minutes cleaning the podium. <laughs> it was it was to watch them all break all of those common rules. Ever all all the politicians that are setting the rules are up there breaking them all right in front of us. I was like, oh, you poor dummies. Which which leads you to believe, you know, that they they haven't been practicing any of this stuff anyways. Probably most of them. Aren't, work, aren't wearing a mask. Most of them aren't doing this. Most of them aren't doing that. You know what I'm saying? If any place, if any place was going to ha hire people to have things wiped down and sanitized, you'd think it'd be, you know, 
that area, the Congress or wherever they're they're wherever they're at. You'd yeah. think it'd be that they'd have someone go through, wipe everything down, so it'd be germ free when they got in there, right? Yeah, I don't know why they didn't have a person stationed at that podium, and after every speaker, that person that's their job sanitize that podium and the microphone for the next speaker. What's up, Burton Smokey? Well, here's, a, I'll, be on, I'll be honest with you. You know, we've got all this stuff at my work <clears throat> to, for in order for the place to be clean, but we've got no one assigned to do it. You know? It's like, it's so, like a petrol pump's near me, the gas station. Everybody's using the petrol yeah. pump, have yeah. gloves on. Then up night when they shut it, someone comes around and cleans it all. Right. But I like, there for hours cleaning it all, and I'm thinking, how oh, done. That person's touched it, and that person's touched it, and he's touched it, and they touched it, and he's yeah. touched it. <laughs> right. See, and I like that. I put gas in the other day at our quick trip gas station, and each pump on each side of each pump are hand sanitizer dispensers that are, you know, they got the laser thing. You stick your hand under it. You don't have to even touch it. You get a bunch of hand sanitizer, and and there's the dispensers with the wipes to wipe down the nozzle, everything. Put your gas in, get the hand sanitizer again, go in, pay for it, come back out, hit that hand sanitizer again yep. in your vehicle. I loved it. I loved it. I, I thought, now here's the one and only gas station I've seen that even if you had an irresponsible person before you, you could be responsible and protect yourself. You got all the hand sanitizer in the world right there. You got the wipes, everything, so that you could be safe. I thought, well, doggone gas station, and they're the cheapest gas in town. If they can do it, every gas I'm station. Buy some. I'm selling some. I'm going to buy some. <laughs> 50 pound a bottle. <laughs> it's selling now, eh? Uh, he's, yeah, he's selling the company's inventory on YouTube. <laughs> I got all kinds of gloves nice. and masks. <laughs> I did find the gloves though at the Dollar Tree. They got, the, they had ten of those big long hooks packed tight, full of them, and they said, really? "Oh yeah, we got cases of them in the back." Well, that's so good. What about masks? And they said, do you really want to wear a Dollar Tree mask to protect yourself from anything? <laughs> good point. Good point. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that'll stop a virus if the thing weighs a pound and a half. <laughs> <laughs> 50 bucks a bottle, you shyster. <laughs> well, it, it was on our news. It's saying disinfectant does the job now. You make your own moonshine. That's better. Yeah. See, I couldn't make sanitizer out of moonshine. I just couldn't do it. You'd be drinking. You would drink it up. <laughs> hand sanitizer. It's bad. Oh uh, yeah. I wish it was like a stomach flu thing because yeah, then I could drink moonshine to get rid of it. There you go. Yeah, but you shouldn't be inhaling moonshine, you know. <laughs> no. Oh, dollar twenty-one. Yeah, wow. we're down. We're we're down finally to a dollar thirty-eight today. Yeah, I think I've seen it that low, but I don't. I don't think it is there now. But I think I've seen it as low as that. So, oh, they're that selling way. hand sanitizers at the hook onto your keys for ten dollars. Wow, it's crazy. <laughs> Half a car already. Ah. Still want a bottle of Jack Daniels. So, anybody else got any plans for today after we get off the computer here? I know, Do I know, Dojo's doing when he gets off the computer. <laughs> I have oh, to run out of town. Yeah, I was thinking of maybe I'd go uh, get my grocery shopping that I was going to do Saturday or Sunday. Maybe done today. I don't know. But then what am I going to do Saturday or Sunday? That's what I'm doing. I'm going to go out, do my running today. So tomorrow when I get my truck and go, I just go out in the woods. I don't have to 
think, well, I got to get back, go to the store. I got to. I, I don't want to have to think of nothing. Just get out, get out of here tomorrow. Yeah, I would have tried to do that membership, but I'm stuck and I'm pissed and I yeah. Well, I can help you with that if you need help. With I that. just I just look at it and it's just pissing me off. <laughs> well, don't look at it. It's hard, and I I have the sty mask yeah, on top uh, of that, so he stares at me too. Yeah, yeah. He's a creepy yeah. bastard, ain't he? Yeah, and he sits on, on top of my other laptop here. So yeah, he's a creepy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but I love it. <laughs> well, I'll be honest with you. Bert, he's talking about price gouging and stuff. I'll be honest with you. Going into the store, I've seen some things. Um, I'm going to reference this only because this is one thing that kind of, you know, usually they will have like these bags of chips, you know, the big bags of chips, you know, two for four or the bigger ones are like two for six. They're not doing that anymore. That bag of chip is now four thirty nine. dollars Yeah. And they don't offer any kind of deals by buying multiples. So I've seen a lot of the the thought of things that would make me buy two of something instead of one of something. They've gotten away with that, any, any kind of special pricing like that at my that, grocery mm. store. That's our local gas stations. You know, they got the like the quick trips, you know, they got the little convenience stores. All of them, it used to be, you know, a bottle of soda was a dollar ninety nine or two for for three fifty or three bucks, there's no two fours anymore. They're, they they took all the two four tags yep. off. Yeah, nothing for two. You don't get two for nothing no more. You just buy at full price. So yeah, yeah no, they're sneaky about gouging. Oh yeah, they just they just take they just take whatever they would normally do away. Oh, I saw a hamburger. Okay. I saw a hamburger in the store the other day too. That I always buy their hamburger. It's great hamburger, but it was a dollar higher per pound. And I go, oh, "What happened to the hamburger? Why is it a buck higher?" And they they said, "Well, no, it's still on sale." I said, yeah, "How can it be on sale? It's a dollar higher." And they said the retail price went up a buck, so you're paying a dollar less than the retail. I said, "Oh my God." Yeah. Oh my God, that's nuts. They wow. raised the hamburger a dollar. It's thirty percent of the what it cost just a month ago. They increased the price thirty percent. Yeah, I was I was paying a little closer attention to some of the stuff I was getting at the grocery store though the other day. And yeah, I'm surprised at the price of some of the stuff, you know. Again, you know, is it price gouging? I don't know. The only good thing here was all this happening. The car insurance has gone down. Yeah, I wish. I wish I'd see a break in mine. So, I haven't seen any break in our car insurance. So, what's up, GoFish Office? How are you doing? Hey, GoFish. Hey, GoFish. I, hey, Karen. My car insurance company actually contacted me and they said that if I have any issues um, with being able to cover my coverage, um, for the next 60 days, next two months of billing periods that they said that I should contact them for their assistance. And I thought, what the heck? So I went online and contacted a sales rep for the insurance company. And they said, oh, well, at what, what we're looking at is um, if, you, if you're having a hard, financial hardship over the next 60 days, will reduce your auto insurance by 50%. So my auto insurance for May was half price. Really? Yeah. Now yeah. that's pretty sweet. I, I, it shocked me. It shocked me. But then I never had a claim with that company, and I've had them for six years. You know, so they're thinking, yeah, yeah this guy, he don't get in the wreck, so... Yeah, that's not happening here in Michigan, not as far as I know. Anyways, I haven't heard anybody. You know, right. we just got our set where the, they, it comes out of our uh, checking account monthly. Anyways, just boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. So that's the way mine was. I was surprised to have gotten that notice. I thought, what? 
reducing it by 50% for two months. Uh -huh. and, but then what they said in that notice was due to most people not traveling, their insurance risk has dropped dramatically. So I can understand that, you know. You know, these insurance companies, they got underwriters and the like, you know, because they don't know. Yeah, it's a holiday weekend, a lot of car wrecks. Insurance companies are kicking out a lot of money. Well, with this COVID virus, everybody's staying home. They're not out driving. They're not getting in car accidents. So if an insurance company doesn't reduce their rates, they're flush right now. They're, boy, they're, they're, they're making tons of money off of the insured because nobody's getting in accidents out there. Yeah. yeah. Like you can buy um you can buy a bowl, you can they're giving away barrels of crude oil now, aren't they? That's it. When I yeah. saw the other day the the effective value of a barrel of oil, negative forty one dollars. Yeah. Negative forty one dollars. That's what a barrel of oil is worth. That's why you're seeing these gas prices. Oil's not worth anything. Hmm. Because they've got so much of it at the minute and everything's overflowing, they're yeah. giving it away. They, they said they got 180% of the reserves that they'd have at, at, a, at a peak season. So yeah. they've got almost twice as much oil as they would have had during the summer tourist season. But nobody's using it. Supply and demand, they got way too much oil stockpiled. They're just like, oh my God. And they're saying it's gonna take it's gonna take a few months for that to balance out because they gotta use up all that surplus, all that surplus oil. And so a negative forty one dollars was the was the price per barrel the other day. That was like three days ago, two or three hey, days. Man, are you there? Nope. Anna, are you there? Her. I'll see if she had that link for runny egg because I got to go do my thing. We've been on here for two hours. If I stay on here much longer, I ain't going to have nothing to talk about tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, all yeah. right. Let me see this. So, um, before we do this, there she is. Did you already copy that link in? No, we didn't egg? tell me, but I can do that. I have it here. But I can do that. Well, of course she can. Yep. There, a computer chick threw it up there. Yep. Oh, computer chick got it up there. Okay, very good. So, That's guys, true. hey, thank you for coming in this late afternoon or this afternoon. I know it's not my normal time, but, you know, hey, my regulars for my panel show up. I appreciate you guys being up here and hanging out with me. A lot of regulars in the uh, chat, so I appreciate you guys all coming and hanging out with me. So all my members, all my subscribers, guys, yeah, I appreciate it. We're going to do a Everything Spicy Raid on Runny Egg. Love you guys. Keep it spicy. Keep it spicy. Keep it spicy. <laughs>